Hi everyone, uh, this is Robert with OddRandomThoughts.com and today I'm going to show you how to back up your Ubuntu uh, Linux server. Um, now there's uh, a lot of utilities and software out there that you can use to back up your your server with but I'm uh, I'm all for simplicity and I like to just use the uh, the tar command um, it's uh, quick and easy and uh, let's let's get right in it and I'll I'll show you how to do this so um, these commands you're gonna need to issue the sudo command uh, so you can get uh, elevated privileges on these commands so we'll uh, type in sudo tar now that's the uh, the program uh, that you're going to use um, in order to archive all of your files into a single uh, gzipped compressed file and then we'll put in some flags here so we'll put a, a hyphen and we'll put a cv PZ and an F. Now the C uh, just is simply telling uh, the TAR uh, application to create a new backup archive. Uh, the V is for verbose. Now you don't have to use this option. Uh, verbose just means it's going to show you the output as uh, the archive is created so you'll know what's being archived and what's going on. It goes real fast so you can't really uh, see everything real well but uh, at least uh, it helps you know when the archive is is finished for certain um, so I like to put that in there if it's uh, unless it's a very large backup um, it's going to take a long time you may not want to to use the uh, verbose mode um, P is just telling uh, telling tar to preserve the permissions of the files that are being put into the archive uh, so if you need to restore these files later all your permissions will remain intact and uh, you won't uh, get locked out of anything and you won't have to go back and reset all your permissions and Z is just telling it to use the gzip uh, compression tool to compress the backup file and uh, this just makes your archive a little bit smaller <clears throat> and F is telling it uh, that you're going to give it a, a file name and where uh, the location is going to be that the archive is stored so now that we've uh, gone over what the the flags are there in uh, the options um, next thing you want to do is put a space and you want to name your archive so uh, we'll just call this backup and then go ahead and put uh, the .tar and the .g extensions on that file. Um, <clears throat> that's just telling you when you see this this uh, file later, you'll know that it's it's a gzip compressed uh, tar file. So, and then uh, next thing, hit a space, and we'll do two hyphens. And what we're going to do is exclude the file that uh, we're creating because we don't want to to create uh, we don't want this uh, tarball to be backed up within our backup because that's uh, <laughs> there's no point in that so we'll uh, where we're our current working directory right now we're in a home uh, server so we'll put backup.tar.gz now you can uh, you can CD into your root directory um, to do this um, or whatever working directory you're in just be sure you put the full path to the the tar file in order to exclude it and then uh, we're gonna put a space uh, two more hyphens and we're gonna put one hyphen file hyphen system okay now uh, the the one file system is telling uh, tar to exclude certain directories it's saying that it's only going to take the one file system in the directory that you're backing up so it's going to exclude things like the the proc directory the sys the mount the media uh, the run directory uh, the dev directories these are all uh, separate file systems within Linux that you don't want to try to back up and you don't want to try to restore them 
um, like for instance PROC and SIS, these are virtual file systems and they provide windows into variables of uh, the running kernel so it's something you don't want to try to to back up or restore um, dev being a, a, a temporary file system um, and this, the contents of the dev directory is created and deleted uh, dynamically by udev so those are files that are constantly going to be changing um, but you get the point uh, you don't want to to back up these dynamically created um, uh, system file systems that are within these other directories so just by using the switch one file system that's telling it to avoid all those other uh, file systems so that's a very important uh, switch to add into your command and then once we've done that um, we'll just come back over here and we'll put a space and a forward slash now that's going to tell tar that you want to back up the entire root directory but only the one file system within that root so uh, if you wanted to back up say just a certain folder or certain directory you could put a like if you wanted to just back up your home directory you could put uh, slash home slash and your username uh, and a slash so that will that'll tell it you know that you only want to back up that directory but we're going to back up our entire installation so we're going to use the command like this and we'll hit enter and it's going to go through the process of archiving every file I would just like to add that um, uh, by um, backing up the root directory it does uh, recourse into all the other directories uh, the subdirectories so it's going to get all of uh, the files in root and all of its subdirectories as it archives um, so that's that's a good thing uh, everything is recursively included so you don't have to worry about that uh, set aside the things uh, this file systems that are excluded with the one file system switch um, and uh, once uh, your backup completes uh, you can take that file and move it anywhere you want um, you can store it wherever you like you could store it remotely you could store it on the system of course that doesn't do you much good and the thing I like to do is to either move it to my my NAS server uh, and store the backup there uh, for restoration later or uh, I can you can even store it on a thumb drive um, like if uh, my backups finished here so let's take a look here um, we can see that um, this backup is only about 756 megs um, so and depending on the size of your installation it could be quite a bit bigger depending on how many uh, applications that you are running on the server but uh, this is a pretty fresh installation so it doesn't take up just a whole lot of space um, but uh, now our archive is finished um, so the next thing uh, you're probably wondering is well how do we restore our backup once we've created it so I'm gonna go into that with you um, it's pretty basic um, pretty close to actually the way that you archived in the first place um, in order to restore your backup you would just uh, do your sudo and tar again but uh, this time instead of uh, using uh, the switch C for creating an archive you'll use X to extract that archive and we can do uh, verbose uh, permissions and it is uh, gzip so we want to uncompress that and um, and we'll put the uh, F on there because uh, we're gonna specify a file name so what we want to do is enter in the path to where our backup is located uh, now if you had it on a thumb drive you could actually install 
uh, the server installation and then you could mount your thumb drive and then you could uh, either uh, copy the backup over to your installation or you could uh, actually reference uh, the thumb drive in this path but keep in mind it's only going to be able to read as fast as as the drive will allow it so it's generally better if you have the backup copied over to to the server so uh, but our path is going to be home server because that's where our backup is currently stored and uh, we put the extensions there and um, dash C uh, this is telling the extraction to change to a whatever directory we list next before it extracts the archive so since we did a root backup we just want to be sure that it changes to the root directory before um, before it extracts all these files otherwise it's going to extract everything into this home directory and that's not going to work for what we're trying to do so uh, then uh, the next thing we want to do is we'll put two hyphens and we'll put in numeric owner now this switch uh, is telling the TAR to restore uh, the archive with the numeric owners of the files within the archive um, rather than matching um, the owners to the environment that you're restoring the archive from so for instance if we're restoring from the thumb drive we don't want to bring the ownership permissions from that thumb drive over with these files we want it to have the ownership permissions uh, that are within the archive itself so uh, we'll use the numeric owner switch and uh, now if you opted not to use the one file system switch earlier and you wanted to include specific directories to exclude uh, whenever you restore your archive you may have to recreate uh, those those excluded directories and allow them to repopulate as the system continues to work uh, just using the the MK uh, DIR command to make those directories um, but by using the one file system switch you do not have to do that the folders will be there uh, there just won't be any contents uh, within those folders so uh, then all we would do here is uh, you just uh, hit enter and now it's going to extract that archive back to the root directory it's going to recur recurse into all the subdirectories and overwrite now this is very important this is going to overwrite every file uh, that is archived um, so you want to be sure this is what you want to do before you do it because it's going to overwrite your entire uh, installation with the backup but generally if you're restoring a backup then that's what you want it to do so as you can see that was that was pretty quick the extraction happens pretty fast um, once you're finished uh, extracting it's a good idea to go ahead and reboot and then everything should be restored back to the state of your system at the time you made the backup so that's how you back up and restore uh, via the terminal using uh, the tar command with gzip compression so I hope this has been helpful to you and uh, I would be honored if you uh, like this video you give me a like and uh, feel free to subscribe and if you like the strange bizarre and unusual uh, please visit the website at oddrandomthoughts.com have a good one